I've really, uh, I've learned to love this man. <laughs> That's hard. No, I don't say it in that manner, that it took me ages to try and like you. But I've learned to like you, you know, and there's been something. No, I didn't say it that way. And, and you've, you've taught me lots. I've learned to like you because there's so much that's in your heart, Pastor Barry, that, that is, um, you know, like I don't think we've sort of seen it yet. We haven't got it yet, have we? It's all in there. And uh, so can you just, you know, give Where's us that there? fresh revelation of him today? Yes. Of him to us today? Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that you're mm. just going to bless him in Jesus' precious amen. name. Glory to God. Glory to you, O oh mm. God. And amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. No, I'm right. Is anybody out there? <laughs> the lights are only up here. We change the house lights and let, let us see people. Yes. I like to see people's faces. Praise God. God is good. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you for coming from India to bless us Western intellectual people that are bound by reason. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Let's just um, wait on the Lord for a bit. Yes, that's good. We just open up our hearts to the Holy Spirit. I just think God wants to do good things in us this morning. And um, Yeah, Father, we just wait on you right now. Thank you. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you come like a cloud upon us. That you wrap us up in your love. That you are so delighted to embrace us. Lord, even the scripture says you are the God who delights to forgive. You delight to forgive. You don't hold back. You're just full of the, the electricity of the desire to forgive and to bless. And you're our Father. You're our God and we are your children and we worship you this morning. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You are so awesome. And we just seek you to come and touch each one of us, your de dear precious children. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, just abide upon us right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We just wait upon your touch. Thank you, Lord. I just want to pray for people today that have had an operation of some sort. That you have had been into a theater and the doctors have operated you on you. And uh, you've, you've gone through that experience. Sometimes it can be very traumatic or very scary or very, you know, lots of things can happen to you as you go into that situation. Or you've had a traumatic experience uh, that of some sort, maybe an accident, uh, someone else in a car accident maybe. Um, you've had an injury at work. Um, you've fallen in some situation, you've broken some particular part of your body, or you've damaged some, something to do with your body. And uh, I just feel that the Holy Spirit just wants to move upon us this morning. And I want to specifically pray for the lifting of the trauma and the fear of the impact. You see, when we go into some situations that are suddenly we lose control, we're of people in control all the time. As we walk down the street, we've got an ability and, and strength and a mindset to walk well and to walk properly, to go from one place to another, etc. But sometimes we can stumble, sometimes things happen, and we're thrown off balance and we lose control, and suddenly our world is just all over the shop and we don't have any power anymore then the impact of the situation can cause us to feel, uh, you know, it will shock us. And, and it makes an impact on our soul, our mind, our will and emotions, because we no longer have that control. And uh, I just want to ask here today if there's people who have been through surgery of some sort. Um, I dislocated my patella, my kneecap in my left leg three times, playing a stupid game with a round ball. 
And, uh, you know, the, th the first time they did it, which they wouldn't do today, they put it in plaster and it made my left leg a little bit weaker, but they put me through um, anaesthetic to have that. I also had my appendix out, nearly burst when I was 18 years of age or 20 years of age, and I had an operation then. Uh, of course, recently I've had an operation to make me into a robot and give me a, a medal in my leg and so on. Um, so, anything like that. Now, is there anybody who feels like you would like to get prayer for that this morning? Just put your hand up. Anyone who's been through an operation, uh, traumatic experience, and the, uh, another word that came to me was um, adhesions. Adhesions in the body that are causing constant pain or struggle with, that's been there for a while. Would all those people who want prayer just stand up where you are? Just stand up where you are. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to want to really believe God for a touch of his spirit on you right now, where you are. And where they're standing, would all of you others go and stand around them and lay hands on them? Let's just join together right now and look for a touch of God. That's the body ministry. Life is in the body through the Holy Spirit. And we just want to believe you, Father, for that, that release now. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus right now for all those who have been through operations, some particular area where a scalpel or a mending has been needed, a joining of bones, and we just seek you now because of that fear or that apprehension of going into the theatre right now. We say in the name of Jesus, we just lift that thing off. We break that in the name of Jesus Christ and we loose the people of God from all kinds of embedded fear, of, of trauma, of the sense of shock or the overwhelming sense of losing control, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus right now. Let there be a release right now. Release in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come and touch Touch now. For everyone, Lord, who has had an accident that caused a loss of control and, and made a deep impact on them because of an, uh, of an accident. They were hit by someone else in a car. They fell off an instrument, a horse, a, uh, in a job situation. There was an accident of some sort. We, we say, Lord, we just come into that scene right now. And that, that impact right, made right there, we say, we break that in the name of Jesus. We break that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we, we release the anointing, healing, and peace of God into that situation to mend the impact on the soul, to mend the impact on the soul, the oil of the Holy Spirit to come right now and speak release and healing into that right now. Anyone with adhesions, Lord God, through that constant pain and that aggravation, that situation, we say, let it be healed in Jesus' name. Oil of the Holy Spirit come and massage the, the adhesions in Jesus' name. Massage it. Holy Spirit, just rub your oil in right now. Come. Hallelujah. Just people, just, just believe God. Just pray with them. Just, just agree with me. We just bless you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. Keep coming. Let's just wait on the Holy Spirit. Let him saturate us. Let him marinate us right now. Marinate you in the Holy Spirit. Marinated. Praise God. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. We just wait on you. There's no rush here. Don't have to rush the Holy Spirit. Just let what's in you flow out in love and grace to each one right now. Release that. Laying on of hands is an impartation. Release what you've got right now. Health and healing and peace and blessing coming right now on each one. Peace of God flow. Peace of God flow. Peace of God just come. I speak the peace of God that passes, eclipses, overwhelms all understanding. Come, Holy Spirit, and just refresh and renew. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your goodness right now. Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. We just trust that the Holy Spirit is doing something in that area of your life today. Praise God. You know, what Pastor Kerry said about uh, forgiveness is so important. If you've ever had an accident, uh, as you've hit someone else or someone else has hit, hit you, have you ever forgiven the other driver for, the, for the, their recklessness or foolishness? Or if you caused an accident, have you forgiven yourself? You know, a lot of people are healed from chronic issues and so on when they come to grips with the fact of the power of forgiveness. And uh, especially forgiving ourselves. And we can say, ah, I'm so stupid. I wish I was... <coughs> and you are wrapped up in the fact of your, your own accusation against yourself of your stupidity. And we need to break that and renounce that and forgive ourselves. Lord, you've forgiven me for being a such and such. And I forgive myself in Jesus' name. Barry Winton, I forgive you for being such an idiot. <laughs> and I want to take the volatility out of the word idiot. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So it's important. You know, we've, we've seen lots of testimonies. And we saw, a, we were watching a DVD from Toronto one, uh, one week. Joan and I just um, watched this. And they went around praying for people. And there was this particular person who had had an injury in their body for years and years and years and they prayed over them and a touch of God came on them but the, the healing came when Carol Arnott said to them have you forgiven such and such and such and such and they said no and they, they then she led him through a prayer of forgiveness and bang the healing came it was complete amen the power of forgiveness I love what you said Pastor Kerry about the fact that Jesus bought all the offences of all people, and they're his. And we have no right to hold anything against anybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know what to preach, but I'm just doing it anyway. I've got... Oh, heavens. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel. What I want to do this morning is, in this message, I don't know where it's going to go, what's going to happen, whatever. But... I believe that there's a desire in this church for revival. We've been looking at it now for quite a few years. There's been prophetic words. There's a wave coming. And sometimes we can get discouraged about that because we haven't seen it. But I feel, if I can say in my heart, it's only in this number of months probably that I've sensed the tide rising. And I sense the hunger in you. You sense that desire to break through, that sense of we want more than this. And I shared a couple of weeks ago about the breath of God and, and uh, Isaiah, starting off with Isaiah, saying, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. He's saying there's got to be more than this. And I just want to use messages that I feel as, as whenever I give them the privilege to speak to move that along, just to encourage that hunger, encourage that thirst and stir up the, the hope and expectations in our hearts that God is going to move. There's good things happening. And I'm so encouraged about the Welsh revival and those things that happened there. And recently, this year, in the last three months, we've been to hear Heidi Baker, we've been to hear Randy Clark, and we've been to hear Bill Johnson. And I think, wow, the, the touch on it, the, the dimension. You know, some people say, well, I didn't learn anything new. And I think, well, you missed something. It's not what you learn that may be new or not. It's what they carry. God is, is, is filling vessels. He's filling churches. He's filling uh, nations. He's touching people around the world. And the, with that touch, they carry something. They carry the dimension of that fresh wind of God that I just want to imbibe of and breathe in. I thank God for the opportunity that we had and, and with Joan's situation that she went through uh, Randy Clark's two and a half day school on healing. A lot of stuff wasn't new to us over all the years and experience, but something was different. An impact was made and she feels different in a sense because of the atmosphere and the prayer that was received, although there was no ma sense of manifestation or sense of feeling in there. But something's turned the corner. 
And you know, this last, this last week I got a terrible chest infection uh, that I have been prone to only over the last couple of years, never had it as a child or anything like that, and I got a terrible, real big dose of this. I don't get sick, no headaches, nothing, just this congestion. And it was so bad, it sounded like a, a man snoring in the middle of the night and every breath I took, <laughs> you know, it was really full on. But, you know, we were, we'd just been hammering stuff in prayer together. And uh, Joan, I just know, she got stuck into it about Wednesday and really I thought, boy, that's a good fresh anointing. Praise God. And I was saying, yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a trace of it there, that's all. <coughs> and on Friday morning at 4.30, I started to have this coughing. And uh, I won't go into the gory details of what came out, but stuff came out. It just broke something, and it kept coming, and it kept coming, and it kept coming to the point of a clarity and a freedom to breathe. I could only sleep on my right-hand side, not on my back or on my left-hand side because it just nearly choked me. But God did something, some breakthrough. And I thought, how am I ever, before that, how am I ever going to stand up on Sunday choking and wheezing with this rasping sound in front of every side and think I'm a man of faith and power? More like a man of paste and flour, I might be <laughs> I remember Pastor Terry Boyle went to India one year, one year and speaking. He's a pastor who's in Lismore with us, and we're over at Kyogle and so on. And he, he, went, he was playing tennis, and he busted his Achilles tendon, snapped it. And that's really painful and cruel, and he's going to India the next day. And so he's, he gets on the plane, he's hobbling over there and hobbles off the plane. He got a headache, he got sick, he's there and he's going in to teach these people about faith in God. He felt like a very, very poor illustration. But I just believe that God's lifting something and I want to release you and help you with what we feel and what others are, are pouring in. And if we go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, <clears throat> we'll just start off and see where we go with this and see what God just wants to do. But, you know, it's, it's the heart of God to commune with us. It's his, why he created us. He made us so that he could take what he has and give it away. You know, God, what is the, that term that was used we heard in one of these conferences? It says, God is God and his whole demeanor, DNA and drive is to give away everything he's got. That's what makes him God. In all of his fullness and grace, he gives and he gives and he gives and he wants to give away. And he's drawn us here. He's drawn us to this place because he wants to sharpen and hone our hearing skills of his heart. He wants us to hear his heartbeat. He wants us to hear what's on his mind. And this is what comes out here in a, in a de very bad time in Israel's history where Eli the priest was getting old and he... Uh, lost a lot of the hearing of God and the voice of God and the w word of God was dying in the whole land. And uh, Eli's sons, they, he was a priest, he was a high priest and his sons were doing wicked things and they were in a very bad state. And God says here in this situation to him, he says, uh, chapter 2, verse 35, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, a faithful priest, who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. Who will do according to what presently is in the heart of God. Which means he's raising up a priest, and that was referring to Samuel, the young man that heard the voice of God. He's raising up someone that would be in sync with him, in tune with him, listening to him, had a hunger for God, was separated apart for the things of the purposes of God. <clears throat> and 2 Chronicles 16.9 says this. Don't have to turn to all these scriptures. Um, just uh, cha 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. <laughs> it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. The God is constantly focused on us. We are on his radar. We are constantly on his radar. Even if we wander and stray, we may start to go off screen. 
will never be off his radar. The prodigal son was never off the father's radar. He was constantly in his heart. And it says here, they range throughout the earth because God is intensely looking for people to draw into and be partnership with him in all things. He's not exclusive. He's not separating some bits for us and some bits for him and says, oh, we'll give it to this. He is a giver of himself and he releases it to us. So he says, the eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And some just, just different uh, translations, those whose hearts, the King James Version says, uh, those whose heart is perfect towards him. Uh, perfection, just, just a, a statement about perfection. <clears throat> God says, be perfect even as I'm perfect. <clears throat> well, that eliminates all of us immediately. Forget it, let's go back to the world, the flesh and the devil. <laughs> He's saying, be perfect even as I'm perfect. How perfect is God? Absolutely. How perfect are we? Flawed in some areas. What he's saying is, God lives up to the light that he has, right? He lives up to the full light of the revelation of who he is and what happens. He's calling us to live up to the light that he's deposited in our hearts and walk in it. Are you listening to me? So don't get depressed or discouraged about that. The fact is, God just says, I'm just looking for those whose heart is in sync with mine and who will follow in my ways and walk in my ways. And he sees us walking in a perfect path, even with our flaws and weaknesses. <coughs> Hallelujah. It happens. How, how's, it, how's these decrees and these desires met? Well, it's just a matter of constantly opening up ourselves. Look, I know I'm a man of 65 years of age and I know the flaws and the weaknesses and the issues and the disappointments and being through depression and burnout and all kinds of stuff. Got upset and angry with people. Would you believe that? How could anyone get upset with people? Why are you laughing? You know what I'm talking about, and we can get angry and criticize people for all kinds of stuff, not because, so much for their flaws, which are very obvious to us, but the, the thing within us that seems to tap into that and criticize and, and whatever. But God has given us his word, the scriptures, the written word, which came from his living voice, downloaded to people who heard the word, were in sync with his heart, and wrote it down. And the whole Bible is a documentary. It's a documentary of dozens and dozens of people who had an encounter with God, heard the voice of God, and wrote it down. Amen. And we today have this compact library of 66 books that we can turn to Anytime we like and read their stories and read their insights and read their understandings and gain hope from what they had experienced. Praise God. <clears throat> but I believe it's also a, God is drawing us into divine encounters like they had. Just because the Bible is secure in the, the canon of Scripture and we have that revelation, we have that wonderful... I, I read the Scriptures every morning and I love just meditating on scriptures. I love just drinking in the substance of what the Holy Spirit is extracting from that for me. It just refreshes me. It's pure spiritual milk. And that is not a term for babies in that particular scripture. Desire pure spiritual milk. It was a delicacy. Milk and honey was a delicacy for the rich. Hallelujah, come on. It was, it was that in 1 Peter, it says, desire the pure spiritual milk. He's referring to that which is a delicacy. It's a delicacy to receive from the Holy Spirit through the Word of God, that which refreshes and sweetens and, and strengthens your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I love getting good thoughts come. But it's the divine encounter. Let's go to one, 2 Peter then. And... You know, I'm not going to get through all this stuff, but I don't really want to. I just want to say what God wants us to say. And you see, Peter is writing an epistle to uh, whoever. Who was he writing it to? Somebody. 
you know, why do you write a letter anyway? <laughs> You've got something to say. And he's telling them uh, of different things, and he deals with false prophets and all kinds of stuff in his, in his two letters. But in this scripture, he says here, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, he says, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice and that, came, that voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Then it says, verse 19, and we have the word of the prophets made more certain or more sure. You know, through the word of God, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and confirms something. He's saying something. He's present tense. Uh, he's, he's the God who says, I want to raise up a far faithful priest who will do what's on my heart and mind. And he's looking for us to be just in communicado with him, in a sense, through the word, but looking for, and I want to encourage you to look for and seek graciously and patiently divine encounters. Now, this experience of Peter, very, very, very few would have something like that. But there are those moments and those touches and putting ourselves in the right place at the right time that allows God to come and touch us with a, a, an expression and a part of his heart, downloading something of his own nature into us. And when that happens, it drives us back to the Word. It drives us back with a hunger to imbibe the Word of God again. The two work together in a powerful way. You know, too often, you know, the, the point about God speaking is we learn to confess what God said in His Word. But I believe God wants us to step up to hear what He is saying and speak it. Because when you get the download of the Word of God to your heart that you know is a revelation from Him, that is powerful to speak. Bill Johnson said just recently, he said, we are so um, adept at saying what God said, but he believes we're going to move into what he's saying in the present tense. It does not conflict with his word. But it moves us in power. I know in myself, if there's a revelation in my heart, there's a download from God, and I speak that out, there's a dimension of power that comes with it that is greater than just confessing the Word of God. The fact is, you see, uh, as Bill Johnson was saying during the week, he said, um, uh, when the disciples were, were with Jesus, they imbibed of his anointing power. And they went out and did miracles under the covering and the canopy of him, his faith and his relationship with God. And, and in one place, the Samaritans wouldn't have a bar of them. And the disciples said, the sons of thunder, said, Lord, should we call down fire on them like Elisha did? There's a really brilliant teaching about how God corrected, how Jesus corrected and discipled his disciples. It's just opened your eyes. But he said, what was legal in a season and a situation in one circumstance is illegal in another because God wasn't saying that. Now listen, that really summed it up for me. The need to not only be standing on the word of God and confessing it, but be hearing, hearing that word of revelation that confirms with the word and speaking it at the right time will bring release and power and anointing, the breakthrough that won't come any other way. So Peter said, we saw it with our own eyes, the majestic glory. And if you go back to uh, Luke 9, you can keep your finger in the other scripture in Peter, but Luke 9 where this event happened, It says there, um, verse 28, about eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, James, and John with him up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright 
as a flash of lightning. Mark didn't have the same, I mean, these three guys, uh, three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, both record this, all record this story. None of them were there, but they heard it from those who were. Mark probably heard it from Peter. I think Mark wrote his uh, Gospel from the recording of, from Peter at different times. And, and the thing is, Mark says his, his clothes shone so bright, brighter than anyone could bleach them. I thought, well, that's different to lightning, flash of lightning. So Mark was sort of, he's trying, they're all just trying to describe the power and the impact of what was happening to Jesus. So it was a remarkable experience. Uh, then two men, Elijah and Moses, appeared in glorious splendor, splendor talking to Jesus about his departure, etc. Uh, verse 32, Peter and his companions were very sleepy. It seemed like they had a pattern of being asleep when Jesus prayed. Take the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, they were falling asleep. They had a ministry of falling asleep in partnership with Jesus' prayer or something. I don't know. But they were falling asleep. And then it says, but when they came fully awake, <laughs> I mean, they were shocked through. What's going on here? Good grief, there's... Oh, there's Moses and Elijah and Jesus like radiant lightning flashing left, right and centre. And it says, fully awake they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. Then it says down in verse 34, while he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them and they were afraid as they entered the cloud or the cloud surrounded them in other translations. Hallelujah, let the cloud come. And let me be afraid. Let me be afraid. Afraid of this unusual, dynamic, dramatic experience that had never happened before. You see, the New Testament is written. The, the, the New Testament was written by people who entered the cloud of glory in a sense, in all kinds of different manners, not like this one. But that connection, that encounter with God, that released revelation, and Paul writes, and Peter writes, and, and James and John and uh, Matthew and Mark write. They write what they saw. John said in 1 John chapter 1, he said, we have seen him with our eyes. Our hands have touched him. We've experienced him. We walk with him. Peter's saying, we're not giving you fanciful ideas here. Church is not fanciful. It's not a bunch of people off the deep end in some cultish group. We are standing in the revelation of the living God from heaven down to earth and he's taken us into his arms through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross and swept us up into his arms and made us clean and made us sons and daughters and join heirs together with Jesus Christ. Hello. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. And yet we can diminish all this and think, oh, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not this and I'm not that. He has made us worthy. The scripture said he's made us blameless. We're included in Christ Jesus. We're hidden with Christ in God. Where else would you rather be? And it's real. People out there can scoff and joke and mock or whatever about what we believe, but we know we're rock solid in the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God is our dad. The more we have the revelation that he's our dad, the more that we understand the whole point of father in the New Testament being Abba, our daddy, is the, is the power and the extent of this awesome God, re, not reducing himself, but out of his awesomeness, coming down and being so intimate as a father to a child. And that's the way he likes it. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't know where, what to do with all this, but <laughs> it, it says, and we have the word of the prophets made more certain. You, you'll be deeper entrenched in the truth as we come together. Now, I want to say that I believe God's going to collectively bring this church up. The tide is rising. Hallelujah. And we're in the fellowship Hallelujah. Do you know, one of the, uh, my associate pastor in Bougainville in Papua New Guinea said to me once, he said he had a revelation, he saw the tide rising, and you've got all these denominations, 
all set around in their buildings and so on. He said, one day the Spirit of God is going to come like a flood and the tide is going to rise above the denominations and we'll be all in boats, all sitting on top of the surface, looking at one another and we'll be forced to come together in the same spirit and the same heart. Shakabandai. Hallelujah, no interpretation. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. And I, I, just, I just sense that when I give this message for today, it's like, Lord, just raise the tide and cause us to be in the fellowship of his love that's going to cause things to fall off. It's going to cause things to break off. It's going to cause error to fall off or mindsets that are binding us or doubt or fear or uncertainty or unbelief. Praise God. I tell you what, you are all a people of faith here today. You're all of great faith. You know why I say that? No, you don't, do you? Because you're here. You're right. See, she knows what I'm... You're here. And you're here week after week. You're here serving musicians. Praise God for you guys. Sound desk guys. Pastors, Terry, Kerry, and Barry. <laughs> and when I preach, I'm a really juicy berry. It says, the juice is in the cluster in Isaiah. <laughs> it just needs a bit of squeezing. <laughs> ah, look. I've lost my place. I've forgotten what I was doing. Because you're here. Because you're here, because you're here, and you haven't given up, and you've been faithful, and some of you have been faithful for generations. Boy, that sounds old, doesn't it? It's like the old, <laughs> I heard this joke, mate. There's a lot of old people jokes out today, which is really a slant on them. <laughs> I don't count myself in that bracket. I'm only a young guy. But the, this couple were having trouble with their memory, you know, and they couldn't remember anything. And when they went to a therapist or a specialist to help them, he said, look, just write stuff down. When one says to the other, write it down. And uh, so, yeah, they thought, well, that's a good idea. So one night, the, the, the old lady said to her husband, I wouldn't mind a bowl of ice cream. And he said, okay, I'll go and get it. He said, don't you, she said, don't you think you should write that down? <laughs> and he said, no, that's, a, that's okay. And, he said, and then she said, look, I wouldn't mind a bit of cream with it. He said, good, I've got that. No, you should write it down. You should write it down, you'll forget. No, that's easy. He said, she said, but also I'd like some raspberries on top, or strawberries, wasn't it? Strawberries, yeah, you've got to be correct. And... She said, have you got that? And he said, yeah, I've got it. And he says, look, you need to write it down. We're told we need to write the stuff down. He says, no, I've got it, I've got it. So he goes into the kitchen and he's out there for some time. And eventually he comes back with bacon and eggs. <laughs> and she looks at this bacon and eggs and she shakes her head and she's disgusted and said, where's the toast? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Laughing's good for us. I thought that was really funny. Was, well, we're, Joan and I are not in that place. We're really in the right place. Now, that's completely stuffed up my message, hasn't it? I never intended to share that. <clears throat> you know, the encounter on the mountain was a powerful encounter. But what did the Father say in his voice to, the, to these people? Five, if you like. Peter, James, and John, and Moses, and Elijah. Oh no, they'd already gone. He said, this is my beloved son. He'd said that before from heaven as a verbal approval of his son at his baptism before his son ever did anything. So there was no works that he did to gain his father's approval. And the father wanted everyone to know that this is what I want to see, I will see about all of you who come into the kingdom. I approve of you because you're my son. Then it says in this, in the quote in Peter, it doesn't say it, maybe in some other translations, but you go back to the story and it says, what? 
Listen to him. Listen to him. That's the bottom line of the heart of the Father who wants to speak approval to us, regardless of where we're up to in our own thinking, and encourages us, keep in tune with me. I'm the life bread. I'm the flow of life. I'm the power of life. You find your life in me. I'm the tree of life. You see, truth is a person. Truth is a person, not just stuff written down that he wrote and instructed us to read. But the truth of the written must lead us into connection and relationship with a person. The whole point is that we come into the life of God and he downloads it into us and he speaks into us and he's just calling us to walk with him. Hallelujah. And then I'll finish up with verse 21 and one Peter, uh, 2 Peter. It says, well, verse 20 says, Above all, we must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. And that remains today. And you know there's a lot of interpretation that has made many, many denominations using the same book. Why is that? Because there's men's interpretation or inspiration and so on. Oh, I better finish, but I, I've got a quote about the, the prophets and so on here that uh, Vine's expository dictionary is just, uh, no, I'll read it on. Prophecy of Scripture, one's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Carried along. Carried along, carried along, almost like a leaf in the wind. And, and here it says in Vines, it says, to bear, to carry, to, and is rendered being moved. In 2 Peter 1.21, signifying that they were borne along or impelled by the Holy Spirit's power, not acting according to their own wills or simply expressing their own thoughts, but expressing the mind of God in words provided and ministered by him. What's he saying is the issue that we gain from what he said and be moved along and be moved forward in an expectation of revival. Are you with me? It's not just what he said, but what he's saying, which doesn't conflict with what he said. But it's that present intimacy and relationship that draws us aside and in him we're carried along. Hallelujah. Carried along. Carried along. You know, some people say, oh, don't get carried away with that. Get carried away with God. Get carried away. Carry me away, Lord. Carry me away. It's that sense in the heart that says, God, I just want you to carry me away. God said to Ezekiel and to John, come up here. Come up here with me. And I say, Lord, just say it. I'll be there. And I believe that's where we are today. I believe that's the point of sharing this morning that it's a message just to help us move along the road. It's nothing that's going to suddenly break through or release something, but to move us along that road towards expectation that God's pouring out his spirit. And, you know, I love that bit there. It says, and they're afraid when they entered the cloud or the cloud enveloped them. Hallelujah. We don't know what it's going to be like if the sense of God's cloud starts to come, it doesn't have to be visible, but the cloud of his presence. Do you want that? Yes. You do. I know you do. I wouldn't be preaching this. I'm not preaching this to a bunch of dry people who are apathetic and indifferent. I'm speaking this message because God's saying this is where you're at. Yes. This is where we are at. Yes. So why don't you just stand up for a moment and we'll just pray into this and just seek God to, to take us another step. Take us another step on into. Lord, make me hungry. So I think the revival guy in, in um, the Wales said there's two things that he feels is the key to the revival that happened. That was humility first and hunger. Well, I just want to pray, Lord, just ramp up the hunger and bring us 
Don't ever pray for humility. <laughs> That's dangerous because God will allow you to end up in some very embarrassing situations that is going to allow us to, you know, come to our senses or rear up and oppose what's going on. But, you know, humility and hunger. Oh, Father, you're our Father, you're our Dad. Abba, Father, Daddy, God, we are your sons and daughters who you love with exceptional love. And your deep desire is to draw us into the fullness, <coughs> the fullness, <coughs> the fullness of your own heart and you're not withholding anything. Lord Jesus, you said, everything the Father has shown me, I have passed it on to you. And then you said, everything I have received, I give it to the Holy Spirit, who will take what I have and give it unto you. There's no loss between the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the church. There's no loss. And we just say, Lord God, just come upon us and keep coming upon us and draw us in. Keep drawing us. We're hungry. We're hungry and we say, Lord, we just deal with pride and stubbornness or, or our own interpretations or our own understandings and our own limitations, whatever that is. God, we don't care what it is. You said you, you are, uh, resist the proud but give grace to the humble. You said, Lord, that the, the, the Lord loves the broken and the contrite heart. And we just say, Father, in all, any pride or stubbornness in our own hearts, we break that in Jesus' name. We resist that. Any, any unforgiveness in our hearts, any resentment to anyone else or any other church or any other situation, we repent of that, Lord, and we just say we break that and we cut that off and we just shed that garbage. We put off the, the garments of, of, of negativity, Lord God, and we shake the dust off our, our clothes, Lord, and we just rise up, as Isaiah 52 says, and sit enthroned, sit where we belong in the heavenly places as join heirs with Jesus Christ. And we say, cleanse us and wash us and flow through us. Oh, may we even have an experience like Isaiah who saw the glory of the Lord too. And he, he just <coughs> saw himself as he really was. He cried out for cleansing. Yes. Come Holy Spirit. We say, let the tide rise. Come, say with me, let the tide rise, Lord. Let the tide rise, Lord. Let the tide rise, Lord. And carry us away. Carry us away. Carry us away in the Spirit. That fresh revelation. Father, I pray right now over this congregation as a general, wonderful bunch of people of faith here right now. Let the Spirit of wisdom and revelation Come upon this church, upon this body of people and all the people meeting today in other churches around this Redlands and so on. That we might know you better. That we might know you as a wonderful, generous, loving, incredible, extravagant, gracious and expansive father who gives good gifts to his children. We just break off sense of unworthiness right now. We break off the sense of doubt and inferiority and weakness and I'm no good. We break that stuff. That is not what you say. And Lord, as we've been heard and understood that we cannot um, allow a minute of a thought in our minds about us that is not in yours. We cannot allow a thought about us that is not in your thoughts about us. And we just claim, Lord God, a lifting, a rain of pouring out and the tide rising and let us all join together in the fellowship of your love in a new dimension. Ramp it up. Raise it up. Release it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anyone who we prayed over before about trauma, accident, uh, um, operations, etc., and adhesions, and you want further prayer, just come up here. We'll just take time to soak you a bit further in that touch of God. Otherwise, enjoy yourself. Take yourself over there for a cup of coffee. Visitors, if you want to, You're free to avail yourself of those nice tables and chairs up the back, and people will look after you and get to know you and meet you. So 
Yeah, turn around and say to everyone, that's a great message. That's a juicy berry. 